In this example problem, we're going to use a, our linear elastic procedure using the decompression force concept to uh, determine the strains and stresses for both short-term and long-term responses um, under a 225 kip tensile load um, and negative 1000 kip um, compression load. Uh, this is a continuation of previous example problems, so we're going to be using the same cross-section that we have uh, for the last um, two examples. Uh, so you can see we have a rectangular uh, or square column, uh, 18 by 18, with a given area of non-pre-stressed steel, an area of pre-stressed steel, and an area of our concrete. Uh, we have a 7 KSI compressive strength, um, and we have some given uh, long-term um, properties, so our creep coefficient, our shrinkage strain, and our 5% uh, strand relaxation. So the first thing that we need to do in, in this example is we need to um, calculate the initial strains that are occur during the tensioning procedure and the locked-in strain uh, caused by uh, our post-tensioning. So the locked-in strain differential between the post-tensioning and our uh, concrete or our, our column. Um, so to do this, we need to um, find our modulus of elasticity in our concrete. We need to find the initial strain in the pre-stressing. And we also need to find the force in the pre-stressing. Uh, this is the same procedure as the, the last few examples. So uh, we'll go through this quicker. We can then um, find this initial strain caused by our post-tensioning. Uh, using our equilibrium expression and using linear elastic material assumptions. Um, initially, we have no external applied axial load, so n is equal to zero. Um, we can plug in all of our known values and solve for this initial strain that's in the, uh, the concrete or in the column. Um, so we'll find that strain to be negative 0.131. And we can then find this locked in strain differential between the uh, pre-stressing and the, the uh, column to be our initial strain in the pre-stressing minus the strain caused by the during the post-tensioning procedure, um, which will be equal to uh, 6.27 times 10 to the negative third. So now we can uh, use this locked-in strain to calculate our short-term decompression force. Um, so this decompression force is the force required to get our column back to zero strain. Um, so our pre-stressing causes an initial um, strain in the column. So this decompression force is the force required to overcome that initial um, or that initial strain that, that occurs because of the post-tensioning. Uh, so you can see the equation for our decompression force here. And because we're looking at the short-term decompression force first, uh, all of our different long-term components will neglect. Um, so all those uh, additional terms are equal to zero. So our, our decompression force is then equal to the area of our pre-stressing. Um, so 1.224 square inches uh, times the modulus in our pre-stressing. So this is short term, so we don't take into account relaxation. And then times the locked in strain, so 6.2. 27 times 10 to the negative third. And uh, we'll find this to be 218.8 kips. So this is the force required to get our column back to zero strain. Our next step is to calculate our short-term transformed area. Uh, the transformed area, what we're doing is we're transforming our steel and our pre-stressing into an equivalent concrete area. Um, so essentially, if we apply an axial load to our column with steel and pre-stressing, it should have the same response as if we applied a load to a column with this transformed area made of all concrete. Um, so Transforming everything into one material will help simplify our analyses. Uh, so our transformed area, um, our short-term transformed area, is going to be equal to our concrete area, uh, 318.8 square inches, 
plus our modulus in our steel divided by the modulus in our concrete times our steel area plus the modulus in our pre-stressing divided by the modulus in our concrete times the area of our pre-stressing. And this will give us a transformed area of 350.4 square inches. We can then use this transformed area um, to figure out the strain uh, in, the, in our column uh, caused by our 225 kip um, tensile load. So we'll uh, use our uh, equilibrium expression here and with our decompression force and our transformed area uh, to calculate our strain. Um, so our strain is going to be equal to 225 kips minus our decompression force, which we found in the previous slide, 218.8, uh, divided by our stiffness times our transformed area. And we'll get the strain here to be equal to um, 0 0.0037 times 10 to the negative third. So this is the uh, strain that's in our column caused by our 225 kip tensile load. So using this strain um, and our linear elastic material assumptions, we can calculate our stress in our concrete, in our steel, and in our uh, pre-stressing, so as I'm showing there. And then we can take all of our stresses times our areas to calculate our forces. And then similar to previous examples, we can um, add these together to see if our equilibrium checks. Um, so here our, our summation of these three force components is about equal to 225, so equilibrium checks. We can also check our um, material assumptions uh, to make sure that we're linear elastic. So our steel is less than yield, uh, so we're okay there. Our concrete is um, still uncracked. Uh, under this tensile load, um, so we're okay there, and our um, pre-stressing is still in the linear uh, elastic range. Um, so all of our materials check as well. Um, so these are the stresses and, and forces under our um, 225 kip um, axial ten, uh, tension load. Now we can find the uh, short-term strains and stresses under an axial load of negative 1,000 kips, or 1,000 kips compression. Uh, so we'll plug our axial load into the expression that we uh, found on the last page, uh, and we'll have negative 1,000 kips uh, minus our 218.8 kips divided by our concrete stiffness uh, times our transformed area. Uh, and this will give us a strain in the concrete, or a strain in the column um, under a 1,000 kip compression load or negative 1,000 kip axial load uh, of negative 0.729 times 10 to the negative third. So using this strain, we can again calculate our uh, stresses in our concrete, our steel, and our pre-stressing, um, same as before. And then using those stresses, we can calculate our force components, um, just taking stress times the area. And then we can sum those force components to see if equilibrium checks. And we'll get a, a force, or the summation is about equal to 1,000, so our equilibrium checks. Um, we can also check uh, the if our linear elastic assumptions are still holding true. Um, so we have steel's not yielded. Um, 
pre-stressing is still in the linear elastic range, and our concrete stress is less than 0.6 to 0.7 F prime C, so we're okay on all those. So we can compare these results um, using our linear elastic uh, approach with uh, what we had found previously uh, in a previous example using a parabolic approach. And uh, we can see that we're within about one and a half percent in terms of our strain, um, our stress in the concrete is very similar, our stress in the steel is very similar, and our stress in our, our pre-stressing is very similar. Um, so again, generally, um, we're okay using our linear elastic approach um, up to about 0.6 to 0.7 F prime C. Next, we're going to calculate the long-term uh, effects of a of our 225 kip and um, negative 1000 kip axial loads. I'm assuming that those loads would be sustained um, over a certain period of time. Um, so to do this, we're going to uh, use our effective concrete modulus to take into account our creep. So our effective concrete modulus is just our modulus divided by one plus the creep coefficient, which will give us our effective modulus there. Uh, we'll use our effective modulus um, for our pre-stressing. Um, so we have 5% relaxation, so our effective modulus is equal to um, 1 minus that 5% times our stiffness in our uh, stiffness of our pre-stressing, which will give us a, a stiff, an effective modulus in our pre-stressing shown there. Um, and then we'll uh, account for our shrinkage in our decompression force um, by plugging in our shrinkage strain, which is given. So first, uh, we need to calculate our decompression force. Um, so our decompression force and not uh, long term is going to be equal to our pre-stressing area uh, times our effective pre-stressing uh, stiffness 27,075 KSI uh, times this locked in strain 6.27 times 10 to the negative third which doesn't change and then we subtract the area of our concrete, uh, 318.8 uh, times our effective modulus for our concrete, 1290. And then times our shrinkage strain, which in this case is negative uh, 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third. Uh, so we can solve for our n naught then and find our n naught to be 372.3 um, kips. Uh, so this is the, again, the force required to return our column to uh, zero strain. And you can see it, it increases because of the effect of our um, shrinkage. Uh, so next uh, we can calculate our long-term uh, transformed area. And this is the same as the short-term transformed area, except we use our effective um, modulus of elasticity for our concrete and our pre-stressing. Uh, so our long-term transformed area is going to be equal to the area of our concrete plus our modulus in our steel uh, divided by our effective modulus in our concrete uh, times the area of our steel plus the effective modulus in our pre-stressing divided by the effective modulus in our concrete times the area of our pre-stressing uh, which will give us a uh, long-term transformed area of 434.4 uh, square inches. So we're going to use this decompression force and this um, tra a long-term transformed area to uh, uh, calculate the impact of our different sustained loads. 
So using the decompression force and the long-term transformed area that we found on the previous slide, we can calculate the strain caused by our sustained 225 kip uh, axial tensile load. Um, so plugging in our values, we have a our sustained load of 225 kips minus our decompression force, which we found to be 372.3, divided by our effective modulus, 1,290 KSI uh, times our transformed area, 434.4 square inches. Uh, will give us a strain here of negative 0 0.263 times 10 to the negative third. Um, so we can then use that strain uh, that's caused by that sustained 225 kip uh, axial tens uh, tension load um, to calculate the stress in our concrete, steel, and pre-stressing. Um, you can see one of the differences between the short-term and long-term is our inclusion of the shrinkage strain here. Um, and the other is we use our effective modulus in place of our um, you know, short-term uh, regular modulus for our, our concrete and our steel. Um, so anyway, we can calculate the um, stress in our concrete. We can calculate the uh, stress in our steel and the stress in our pre-stressing um, caused by the sustained 225 kip uh, load. Uh, we can then calculate our, our force components and sum these to check our equilibrium. Um, and we can see those check. And we can also check that our uh, linear elastic assumptions are okay. Um, so our steel is still below yield. Our concrete is uncracked in tension, um, and our pre-stressing is still in the linear elastic range. Um, so these are the stresses and forces that are caused by this um, sustained 225 kip uh, axial load. Finally, we're going to uh, find the response of our column um, to a negative 1,000 kip um, axial load, or 1,000 kips uh, in of sustained compression. Um, so we, plugging in our negative 1,000 to our expression, we'll have negative um, 1,000 kips minus our uh, long-term decompression force, uh, 372.3, divided by our effective modulus, uh, 1,290 KSI, uh, times our area, our, our long-term transformed area, 434.4. Uh, and this will give us a strain in the column of negative uh, 2.45 times 10 to the negative third. Um, so th again, this is the uh, response uh, of the column to that uh, negative 1,000 kip um, sustained axial load. Uh, so we can calculate the stresses and the forces similar to what we did with the uh, that sustained 225 kip load on the previous slide. Um, and we can see the stress in the concrete, stress in the uh, in the steel, the non-pre-stressed steel, and stress in our pre-stressing. Um, and then also calculate our force components and check equal equilibrium. Um, so you can see our equilibrium checks. Um, our stress in our concrete's okay, and the stress in the pre-stressing's okay. Um, but our stress in our non-pre-stressed steel is uh, greater than our yield stress. Um, so the stress in our pre-stress steel is greater than our yield stress. So our assumption that all of our materials remained um, linear elastic is no good. Um, so under this sustained um, axial axial load, um, the linear elastic approach is not is no longer valid. Um, so we would need to use an, another approach here.